Can you just go back? Uh, your slides. Okay, so. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so sorry, Sachin. Uh, no problem. Let's, <laughs> let's begin. We are very happy to have Sachin, and he is going to talk on momentum space correlation functions in 3D CFT. Over to you, Sachin. Okay. Uh, I would like to thank the organizer for giving me this opportunity to uh, speak here. So I'll be talking about some of the recent works uh, that we have been doing in momentum space question function, space, especially in 3D CFT. Uh, so it's not moving to the next slide, sorry. Ah, okay. <clears throat> These are some incomplete uh, set of references. Um, and so, uh, you know, this is Maldasana, Pimentel, uh, uh, Sandeep Trivedi, Subrat, Isan, uh, and then uh, um, Nilay, Asis, uh, and other people uh, did a lot of work in the uh, cosmology and CFT setting. And then there were works by Skenderis uh, and other people explicitly uh, just a CFT done in momentum space. And then uh, there are recent work by Bauman, Enrico, uh, Pajer, uh, and uh, other people. Um, these are not complete set of uh, paper, but uh, you know because of the space, I could not put in all the things. So I, I'll be uh, talking about uh, my work based on uh, work done with Amin uh, Renjen, um, uh, Abhishek, uh, PhD student, uh, Aditya Yathat, uh, they were undergrad students. Uh, Dhruva is an integrated PhD student. Asna, Prabha, Bibhut, these, these are all undergrad students at ISAC. Okay. So uh, first, uh, this is just a brief outline. Uh, so first is, uh, I'll discuss a little bit what are the difficulties associated with the momentum space safety corridor. Uh, I'll review some of the position space results and we'll see how uh, they actually come out beautifully using momentum space results. I'll also uh, talk about some new results that we obtained. So uh, some of the motivations to study are, you know, um, application to cosmology, condensed matter physics, etc. cetera. Uh, it also has a connection to the S matrix uh, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, to the S matrix. Um, my personal motivation was I was trying to calculate using Feynman diagram uh, some of the CFT quarters and so, uh, uh, I, I, uh, what I realized there was not much result available in momentum space CFT uh, uh, quarters and in Feynman diagram we do in momentum space. Okay. So uh, why is that? Uh, why has it not been studied uh, much? It's technically actually difficult. Even calculating three-point function is actually difficult. Okay. And uh, even the existing results did not give much insights or uh, neither the uh, new results as compared to the position space thing. Okay. Um, for example, until very, until very recently, uh, the four point function of scalar in terms of cross ratio, the basic thing that we write down in the case of uh, position space that you, know, you just solve a conformal uh, water entity by writing in terms of cross ratio, that was not known. Very recently, it was calculated by Skendris et al. And the expressions actually look very, very ugly in terms of some integral representations, okay? For example, as simple as TOOO, uh, the spinning four-point function, uh, not understood uh, the, in terms of cross ratio, which is a very basic thing that we write down in position space. Uh, the contact terms here in momentum space, they play a very important role. And uh, one really need to also need to understand carefully how to regulate various divergences that appear. Uh, so I'm going to uh, review uh, some of the known results in position space. That, that these are uh, work done by several people over the seven, eight years. Uh, to, uh, to start with, let's take a simple example. Let's take, uh, JJT, spin one, spin one, and spin two current, the Watagase identity uh, for this is written in equation uh, here. Um, as you can see that there are explicit appearance of the delta function. So if you work at separated points, uh, this right hand side can be set to zero. So the way to calculate the correlator is to write down conformal invariant structures and then, Im then impose conservation at separated points. And uh, you know, doing this process uh, in three dimensions, it will give you two parity even and one parity odd structure. This was the work done uh, in this reference. 
for general spin, this procedure gets very complicated. And uh, uh, it was shown that, uh, um, however, you know, you can do some example by example basis and you can show actually uh, this result holds that there are two parity even and one parity odd uh, uh, result. Uh, for example, in interestingly, if you look at outside the triangle, which are uh, that spin configurations are such that uh, the operators are such that SI is greater than SJ plus SK, for example, J4, J1, J1, four is greater than one plus one, okay? so. For those quarter, you can show that the parity for exactly conserved current, a parity or structure does not exist. Okay, there are only two parity even uh, structure. However, if you allow for weakly broken higher spin currents, then the again the parity or structure uh, comes into the uh, uh, existence, and this was work done by this set of people. Analysis are beautiful, but uh, are much more detailed. Okay, uh, quite detailed. Uh, moreover, explicit computation of this parity or structure in general can be actually complicated. Uh, the parity even results can al always be computed in the free theory. Uh, analysis of supersymmetric case was also done uh, by this set of people. So uh, here different color codes in the names are, they are different set of authors, okay, in different set of papers. So, um, uh, and it, it was conjectured that there, there are two uh, structures, uh, one parity even and one parity odd case, in particular uh, three dimensional n is equal to uh, one or two supersymmetric theories. Okay. Um, then there were uh, this collider bound. Uh, th these are the set of people who actually uh, did uh, uh, works, and it was shown that in three dimension, if I parameterize my three point function in terms of uh, two parity even, these these are parity even. F meaning free fermionic theory, you calculate uh, JJT in free fermionic theory and JJT in free bosonic theory, and th this is a parity odd, and these are the coefficient, let's say. Then uh, it was shown that they satisfy this kind of collider bound for generic CFT, okay, where CJ is a two point function of JJ. Here I have written things for according to my normalization that will be suitable for me, but this was the essential result. And for holographic CFT, the uh, bound was a little more stronger. And uh, this one was replaced, replaced by some function of uh, delta gap, uh, okay? The similar bound, bounds exist for, let's say, TTT and other correlators, uh, TTT, JJO, those kind of correlators. Now, um, having, uh, you know, analyzed some of this result in momentum, the position space, let, let me come to the analysis in momentum space, okay? So uh, first one or two slides, I'm going to review what was actually known. In momentum space, first thing that you observe is that the Watt-Takahashi identity, you can no longer neglect the Watt-Takahashi identity because there is no delta function here and there is no notion of the separated point. Because you know, if you do a Fourier transform, uh, you are integrating over whole space time. So there is no notion of separated point in momentum space. Uh, on top of that, unlike in position space, here one needs to actually solve a second order differential equation. The conformal water entity is a second order differential equation and it takes the form uh, here I have written that, you know, uh, it, it is related to the, this what has identity that happens, okay? To illustrate this, let us take an example of stress sensor three, three point function that uh, appeared in this paper of Skinberg's. So the first step, uh, sorry. So the first step uh, to write down the three point function of the stress sensor is to break it up into two pieces. One is transverse, another is local piece. Local piece is determined in terms of the two-point function and explicitly gives the saturates the what the identity. The transverse piece, if you dot with the k1 or p1 or p2 or p3, this will just go to zero. So these are the transverse components. Okay. Next step is to write down the local piece is totally determined. Next, next step is to write down the transverse pieces in terms of uh, you know, you need to write down an unsearch, and the unsearch. Uh, these are pi are the transverse stressless projectors. Uh, and you can see this is very complicated, uh, you know, uh, set of thing. And there are five independent coefficients uh, with a lot of uh, permutation that are involved. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to the go, go into the details of it. Uh, then the next step is to use conformal water entity to solve it. Here I have just written some set of uh, conformal what identities and uh, these are all second order differential equation coupled second order differential equation after a lot of work you can solve them and uh, the expression actually looks so complicated here 
um, these are A1 to B1 to are some functions of momenta. And uh, A1 to 3 is just P1 plus P2 plus P3 or K1 plus K2 plus K3. Uh, and, you know, uh, so this is the expression which does not actually give much insight into the results, okay? Uh, you can actually, parity odd case is even more complicated. In addition, one needs to deal with some complicated Southern identities. There are some degeneracies that you need to deal with. If, if, even before writing down a solving equation, uh, differential equation, you need to write down correct set of differential equation. That's, that becomes very complicated. And uh, quotas involving higher spin actually becomes even more complicated. Uh, so that's why uh, uh, figuring out independent structure is complicated before, even before solving them, okay? Uh, if the three-point function is complicated, uh, one can imagine the four uh, complicacy involved in the four-point function. This explains uh, that, you know, why there has not been much progress uh, that was made in momentum space analysis, okay? Uh, the results are complicated and gives no particular insight. Uh, however, uh, there has been some recent progress, okay? That, that is what I'm going to talk about. Some of, uh, some of the outcome of our recent study uh, gave us some better understanding of the some known CFT results in poison space. And we also obtained some uh, new results uh, that were not understood in the poison space. For example, see Avisek and Renjan's talk uh, in this uh, conference. For example, uh, double copy relation of the CFT quarters uh, that you don't see in poison space, uh, some relations to the flat space amplitude or relation between parity even and parity or amplitude. These are the, some of the new results uh, that has been already discussed. Okay, so uh, to proceed, uh, this was discussed, this part was discussed also in Avisek or engine stock, but I'll just summarize very briefly. Uh, let us split the CFT quarters into two pieces. One we call homogeneous and another we call non-homogeneous. Homogeneous piece is something uh, that uh, the conformal under conformal water entity, it goes to zero, whereas a non-homogeneous piece saturates the water entity, meaning it gives the water entity in the right hand side. In Poisson space, we generally don't need to do such a distinction because what are, you work with that separated point and uh, you know, the water entity is just zero. So you know, K kappa on them is just zero always, okay? Uh, the, for concept currents, the water identity uh, here, that uh, water entity is generally unique. Um, this equations are best solved in spin analysis variable. Uh, first, uh, that was done in Maldasana and Pimentel. One can show, interestingly, that unlike in Poisson space, in momentum space, if you try to just solve this set of equation, you get instead of one, there are four solutions. And uh, out of these four solutions, uh, if you demand consistency with the Poisson space OP limit, you will be able to show that this B, C, and D, this coefficients are just zero, and you just get this uh, function of f, f of k1 plus k, k2 plus k3. And uh, the only, uh, you will, one will be able to show that the only acceptable pole structure of the three point function of uh, uh, correlator in momentum space has only this kind of pole. It cannot have a pole like K1 plus K2 minus K3 kind of pole. Just to emphasize this one point, in this is for TTT, A123 was K1 plus K2 plus K3, okay? So you can see that the only pole that appears is of this kind only. Any other pole is not, not consistent with the uh, physics requirement that you have, okay? So, and this gives a unique uh, homogeneous solution. You can ask, what is there an interpretation of these results? Uh, it, it turns out actually there is some beautiful uh, interpretation of this result in cosmology. That is something I'm working on right now. Hopefully I'll report that uh, in future. Uh, because uh, we have, so, uh, you know, um, the solution to this equation, because this is a, uh, we see that the homogeneous equation, there is only unique solution. So uh, you can solve it for uh, both, uh, you, you can solve it, this homogeneous solution uh, is unique, and you, ca you can get a maximum one parity even and one parity or homogeneous uh, solution for a given correlator, okay? In fact, uh, one surprise you immediately see is that the inspanner acid variable, the equation for homogeneous part for parity one and parity odd case is just totally identical. And the solution is same up to some complex uh, number, okay? Converting that into momentum, momentum space uh, thing gives a distinct result in cohesion uh, for parity even and parity odd. 
So uh, what we summarize is that uh, there is one parity odd and one parity even homogeneous structure. Now let's come to the non-homogeneous structure. In the non-homogeneous structure, uh, because of the Watt-Takase identity, and this Watt-Takase identity is unique, you can show that uh, if I take, for example, for TJJ, JJ two-point function can be both parity even or parity odd. If I take JJ to be even, then you get one non-homogeneous parity even. If you take JJ to be odd, then you get uh, one parity odd non-homogeneous solution. And this can be repeated for any arbitrary spin JS1, JS2, JS3. So, you know, you get the counting two even plus two odd is equal to four. However, we saw uh, in position space, there were only three structure. So why there is this discrepancy? You can show, uh, uh, what you can show is that th this extra parity odd uh, non-homogeneous space that you get is actually a contact term. The simple reason, to, simple way to understand this is that if, if you plug in the parity odd two point function, parity odd two point function turns out to be a contact term. Okay. So, so solving a uh, non homogeneous equation with a contact term in the right hand side will give you a, a contact term uh, as a result. And uh, this simple, uh, uh, this makes the counting two even, one odd, and one contact, odd contact term. This is consistent with the Poisson space analysis uh, because Poisson space analysis was at separated point. So this term was not seen. Uh, let us remember here that unlike in Poisson space where you had to do case by case basis about uh, writing down con uh, uh, conformal invariant structure and then conservation and then try to find out how many structures in, in momentum space actually we are just able to count the structure very easily by, by just thinking about the general uh, general structure of the momentum space thing. Even before solving the equations, uh, we are able to count how many answers would be there. To, uh, to make these uh, results a little more transparent, um, you know, uh, this uh, in momentum space, this answers, for example, TTT, there are four, four structures that we got in momentum space. They have a simple map in, in the d uh, case, uh, which is, you know, you can uh, calculate in d uh, uh, The TTT homogeneous even comes from WQ. Non-homogeneous even comes from the Einstein gravity. Homogeneous odd comes from W square W tilde. This is parity odd. And non-homogeneous odd comes from WW tilde. And this is a contact term you, as you can calculate, okay? Uh, the other note, uh, you know, uh, this is uh, the non-minimal coupling. WQ is a non-minimal coupling and uh, Einstein gravity is a minimal coupling. So this is the way to, one way to keep in mind that the homogeneous are related to the non-minimal coupling, whereas the non-homogeneous are related to the minimal coupling, okay? Now, uh, having counted the structure, let's come to the next uh, next observation that was made in Poisson space that the outside the triangle, uh, there was no parity or uh, structure available. In momentum space, actually, uh, uh, in Poisson space, it was a detailed analysis. Momentum space is just a one line analysis. And the analysis is that uh, you can show that the outside the triangle, um, the only possible uh, whole structure in momentum space quarter will be of this form, ki plus kj minus kk. You will not get a pole structure of the form one over k1 plus k2 plus k3, but you will always get a pole structure with a negative sign, okay? And uh, consistency with the OPE limit immediately says that, that, that this cannot uh, exist. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, sorry, I, I should have said that, you know, you, you can show that uh, any homogeneous solution cannot exist outside the triangle. Uh, so the only allowed solution is the non-homogeneous solution. The homo we saw that the parity odd structure, uh, the non-trivial parity odd structure is a homogeneous solution. So uh, we immediately conclude that the homogeneous parity odd solution cannot exist outside the triangle. And uh, you immediately get that the only solution that is available is a non-homogeneous parity even structure consistent with the uh, position space analysis. Uh, however, we also discussed that, you know, in the case of weakly broken high swing symmetry, uh, it was allowed to have parity odd structure. How does it come about in the momentum space? For the case of weakly broken uh, cons of current, uh, weakly broken currents, um, let me take a simple example of a J4, J1, J1. Uh, the, you can write down what is the watt takas identity because of the non-conservation. Uh, this non-conservation is uh, such that uh, you know, this is non-zero, it is not conserved even without the insertion of other operators, okay? And you can show that, uh, uh, that this non-conservation, there is a epsilon, the parity odd epsilon that appears in the non-conservation. 
and uh, you know uh, these are the uh, jj th this is how it is non conserved uh, you can show that the uh, what takahashi identity for the non conservation case uh, takes this complicated form which is not very important to know the details but you can immediately see that uh, the there is a parity odd struct parity odd non conservation structure that appears which actually is non zero uh, non contact term and hence it will give a, a non homogeneous parity odd contribution so we again get back to even and one odd but all non homogeneous uh, for the case of weakly broken higher spin currents okay chochin just yes. tell you 20 minutes sir okay uh, okay i'm done. okay okay so here i have uh, just summarized uh, the, the same thing i have just told you about the interplay between homogeneous and the non homogeneous thing uh, i'm not going to go into the details of it um uh, uh, you know, uh, till now I have been just counting the structures, understanding uh, what are possible, what is not possible, uh, whatever the explicit answer, you know, as I saw, explicit answer look very complicated. Uh, is there a better understanding of the explicit structure? Uh, we were able to actually uh, figure out uh, some set of building blocks in the momentum space, uh, using which we were able to write down this homogeneous parity even and parity odd answers for any correlators. So these are some uh, building blocks. Uh, uh, these are some complicated expression. E is just basically K1 plus K2 plus K3. Uh, the interesting thing about them is that if you apply K kappa on them, all of them actually goes to zero. And uh, you know, you can using those building blocks, it is very easy to write down the uh, even and the odd for arbitrary spin S1, S2, S3. These are uh, homogeneous solution. Okay, this is the final answer, which were very look, look very complicated when I showed you TTT, but now this is just this is the full answer in momentum stress. Okay, uh, for this is remember this is for homogeneous even and homogeneous odd. Uh, the analysis of non-homogeneous cases is a little more complicated and requires analysis a case by case basis. Uh, however, uh, we were able to show that the non-homogeneous uh, even. Uh, is related to just free bosonic theory plus free fermionic theory by uh, two uh, in the same correlator calculated in the free bosonic theory and free fermionic theory and uh, uh, homogeneous even is just free bosonic result minus free fermionic result by two okay um, what about the parity odd result? You know, uh, here, uh, uh, parity odd result I have already uh, told you. So I am now going to give a, a brief. Uh, uh, um, uh, I, I'm going to talk about an interesting relation that we obtained, uh, as I said, that the, in the spin helicity variable, uh, parity, odd, and even homogeneous equations were just identical. And that gave actually uh, this result, that the odd uh, homogeneous is same as the even homogeneous with a, a, a imaginary factor. This, you can translate it into the momentum space, and this is the relation that you get. That, you know, if you have a homogeneous parity, even say TTT answer, by just doing an epsilon transformation, uh, you can just get the uh, TTT parity odd answer, okay? And this can be generalized for any correlator involving any spin. So uh, the general answer is that parity odd, the parity odd homogeneous answer is just the epsilon transformation of the uh, parity even homogeneous answer and parity even homogeneous answer can be uh, obtained from free boson minus free fermionic theory. Okay. The epsilon transform of uh, boson plus fermionic theory was the topic of Avisek's talk, uh, which actually led to uh, uh, a different parity or uh, structure. Okay. Uh, fine. So this we have talked about, uh, you know. Um, Exactly conserved current. So here, whole structure is now understood. That you know, uh, what are the parity even parity odd structure? How to calculate them? Uh, what about weakly broken uh, result uh, for parity odd outside the triangle? Okay, uh, or uh, for the case of weakly broken um, uh, currents. Here, uh, you know, here again, there is a beautiful connection that we were able to see. Uh, so uh, let me just show you once more. For the case of the watt takahashi identity for non-conservation thing, uh, by using the non-conservation of the high spin currents, was taking something very complicated form. But uh, it turns out uh, that uh, this non-conservation watt identity, you can uh, map it to the watt takahashi identity of boson minus the watt takahashi identity of fermion of the same coordinator. Any coordinator you take, 
calculate what the hazard yield for boson and the fermion and just do the epsilon transformation of that. And the fact that this parity odd result outside the triangle are non-homogeneous and they are just fixed by the, they will be fixed by what exactly you give as a non uh, as a Wattahase identity. This immediately tells that the odd non-homogeneous answer outside the triangle is just epsilon transformation of the bosonic answer minus the fermionic answer, okay? So this result uh, immediately holds even outside the triangle. Okay, uh, now what about the collider bound? A collider bound, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm going to show you some very nice picture that comes out uh, in this way of thinking. Um, oh, sorry. So, um, so this is a general three-point function, uh, which is written in terms of free boson, free fermion, and the parity odd. These are the NB, NF, and N0, depending on the theory, it will come out. Writing in terms of homogeneous and non-homogeneous takes the following form. The non-homogeneous comes as NB plus NF, homogeneous comes as NB minus NF. And the odd comes as uh, this odd. I interestingly, you can, if you go to the spin helicity variables, because of the relation between odd and the uh, even, you can combine this further into a complex number, this two into a complex number. And here is what I have written. CS is a two point function. This NB plus NF you can show using what the identity is related to the two point function of the uh, two point function. Okay? You can immediately see for the case of supersymmetry, uh, NB is equal to NF. And this homogeneous parity event structure just drops out and you get two structure, non-homogeneous parity event and odd uh, structure. And this was what was conjectured earlier. Uh, the analysis I just showed is a very crude, but it gives a, you know, it immediately tells that writing results in terms of this variable makes the results much more tra transparent. Now, coming back to this, uh, we, using this picture, I'm going to show you the results of the conformal collider bound. Uh, first, uh, you can show using this picture that uh, using this picture for uh, uh, for you know free boson or the free fermionic theory or the higher spin theory or weakly broken higher spin theory, this gamma s always takes plus minus one. Okay, and this is the picture for this that the free if you uh, saw this exponential i theta, free fermionic theory lies here, free uh, uh, free fermionic theory lies here, supersymmetric theory. Uh, will lie somewhere at the center, and the uh, Chan Simon supersymmetry theory will lie along this line, uh, vertical line, and the interacting Chan Simon's uh, matter theories or weakly broken high spin theory will lie along this uh, circle of unit radius. And the conformal collider bound actually takes this simple form that uh, all the all possible allowed uh, uh, CFT will lie inside this circle where the bound is saturated by the high spin theory or weakly broken high spin theory. And the blue circle here are the holographic CFT, which is a little more stronger bound. So we see that uh, representing in this, uh, the interpretation of the bound becomes much more simpler. It just bounds the uh, homogeneous, par uh, uh, homogeneous parity, even parity odd structure, okay? Sachin, I'm really sorry, just one minute left, okay? Just one minute left, okay. So uh, I'll just uh, finish, I'll just finish my talk uh, very soon in one minute. So, you know, uh, what about the four point function? Uh, it's actually very complicated uh, if for general uh, theory, as I explained earlier. Uh, however, uh, Ch uh, chan matter theory or weekly book and high spin theory, the theory, which were understood in this set of papers, and there, there were a set of papers where this uh, set of theories are introduced, uh, we have been able to make some progress uh, along this line. Uh, so I don't have uh, time to tell you this, but uh, uh, what I just uh, wanted to, Tell you is that uh, you know uh, one of the ways to solve the uh, weakly broken high spin theory is that you write down uh, what I call the uh, weakly broken high spin uh, current. Use weakly broken high spin current, uh, high spin algebra to write uh, constraint your correlation function, uh, and then you see that there are three independent structure that was shown. Maldasena actually calculated this alpha, beta, and gamma. Uh, what using the relation parity even parity order relation, what we are able to show is that this, uh, you know, uh, this complicated high spin equation, which might look very complicated, actually maps uh, for the case of interacting theory to the free theory. Okay. And hence it was very easy to solve. And uh, so here I'm just going to flash you the results for TTTT using this, you know, mapping the weakly broken high spin currents to the free theory. We are able to get some sort of result for TTTT. TTTT actually has five structures. 
uh, as compared to the three structure for TTT 3.1, out of which X0, X2, and X4 are parity even, X1 and X3 are parity odd. And uh, we were able to get uh, these results that, uh, um, you know, of course, X0 is the free Fermionic theory, X4 is the critical bosonic theory, the X2 comes out in terms of free boson and the critical boson. Uh, X3 and X1, though, uh, two parity odd results, those are actually related. And the last structure X1 is given by this simple epsilon transformation of the free fermion on the critical bosonic answer. Uh, there, uh, there are small glitches to this work. So we are uh, trying to fix up this. So uh, this will hopefully appear soon. A similar structure, similar result exists for JJJJ. And for JJJJ, there was a previous work uh, by this uh, R. Keller. Uh, which calculated perturbatively in spatial kinematics. And uh, actually some, some of the result the relation that we got uh, uh, actually matches with those, consistent with those results. So uh, finally, the TTTT actually takes this simple form. Okay? So free fermion, critical boson and TTTT odd, and which is also known in terms of the free theories. Uh, so, okay, so the future direction. Uh, 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 so, you know, uh, what I, uh, so one of my personal motivation was to understand uh, doing calculation perturbatively. It looks like the relation between parity even and parity odd uh, indicates that the you know in the perturbative level uh, parity uh, you know even loop and the odd loop will uh, composition in Feynman diagram will actually map to each other. Uh, it's something interesting I plan to actually uh, pursue. Uh, maybe one should also be able to define something called anionic currents, which will be. Uh, you know, which will give an effective description, effective free theory uh, description as Siraz was de uh, describing, but this will be at the low energy. And the bootstrapping in spin energy variable will be really nice. And uh, hopefully, you know, momentum testing looks interesting and hopefully it will give some new results. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Uh, thank you, Shojin. We are really over time, so maybe just one question. You can unmute yourself and ask. Uh, I, I, oh, sorry. Uh, Go ahead, Sovrat. Oh, sorry, sorry. So, such an, a very short question. At some point, you said uh, for a TJJ correlator, I thought you said there are three uh, structures possible in position space, but you identified four and uh, isolated one of them as a contact term, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, so now, um, uh, so you know, I when I when we also worked on these momentum space things, we were kind of careless. I mean, we also you know said contact terms we usually throw away, but actually contact terms in position space come from an I epsilon prescription, right? And the I epsilon is often like not something one can play around with. So it's fixed by some analyticity properties in the Euclidean plane. Hmm. So is it really the case that there is a fourth free parameter in momentum space that is not fixed somehow by you know demanding analyticity in in the Euclidean plane, um, yeah, uh, or, or is it you know that this fourth structure is actually fixed? Yeah, so uh, I'll give you one very uh, concrete example. So for JJT, actually, the fourth structure actually vanishes. You can show that it actually vanishes. But for TTT, that fourth structure you can show that actually comes from WW tilde, okay, in the bulk from the DS, and uh, that is a contact term. And uh, I don't know, like, how will it be? How will it be fixed from other other things? Okay. Because you see, in position space, there's an analyticity structure. You have the correlators have to continue the right way when you continue uh, the the time to Euclidean time. You know, there, there, there's a forward light cone, so there's a certain analyticity structure, and that fixes the I epsilons. So those I epsilons, so you know, the contact terms come together with the point with the terms at separated points. Wait, so, but, you know, so, so but this contact term that I'm talking about will uh, just also exist in the Euclidean space, uh, you know, it, just uh, without without actually before going to the I epsilon, you know, uh, Minkowski, just these are all Euclidean analysis I did, and it will just also exist in the Euclidean space itself. So uh, oh. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, so th this will just exist even in the Euclidean space. The analysis I did was all in Euclidean space. See, okay. Uh, uh, fine. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. There is a. Sorry to interrupt, but as Sachin said, my limited understanding is there's a new term in the Balkan theories, uh, Suvra W W tilde, whose coefficient will enter here. No, Sachin. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I was wondering if you can use some properties in position space that may not be so transparent in momentum space, such as the analyticity to fix it. But Sachin is saying that it's really a, a Euclidean. You know, usually the delta functions come come with the separated terms. You know, it's not like the delta functions are arbitrary. 
So you have one by x one minus x two squared plus i epsilon. So you know, and that tells you there's a delta of x one minus x two squared in the pro in the correlator. So uh, the delta functions are not separate usually, but may maybe there's something. Yeah, I, I mean, at yeah. least such an bulk analysis shows there's an independent coefficient there. That's what I understood. Such an shows. Okay. Fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, just uh, uh, about that. Suppose we look at the uh, the contact term for the parity odd two point function. That would just be adding a Chern Simons term to the to the to the effective action. You know, suppose we couple the the currents to a gauge field, and just write an ADA in the effective action. You know, so that's just completely distinct. Just add that to the partition function. That's right. a, that's a, an effective term, Chern Simons term. Right. Thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, so if there is no other. Jovanita, will you allow one small comment? But please, I don't have ahead. to make it. No, it's okay. Go ahead. Sachin, I should bug you later. But uh, I mean, you you emphasize the parity violation uh, here in various sectors. But just to say, uh, it's worth thinking about. Uh, the leading parity violation effect, say, for the non-Gaussianity in the scalar sector in inflation, which we should be able to derive easily from your results, mm -hmm. uh, just because the scalar three-point function in terms of non-Gaussianity would maybe be the observationally most interesting place uh, after the TT two-point correlator. So anyway, it might just be worth thinking about the cosmological inflationary uh, consequences of, of parity violation uh, also in the scalar sector. Okay, just okay. wanted to suggest that. Okay, okay. we'll talk. Okay, uh, thank you, Sachin. You can kindly unshare.